Super, super funny. Truly one of my favorites in DC. Put your hands together for John Jacob! Right, thank you! Thank you! Thank you! Happy birthday! Whose birthday was it? Oh, happy birthday! I'm your stripper! So, here we go! That's right! I look like a stripper you get off Facebook Marketplace. You know? Instead of Magic Mike, you get Tragic Mike. All right. Who's the lucky lady? All right. You know. This off. I know, so I didn't dress up too much. I came here right from work. I sell beer to high school kids. So I, I rushed over as quickly as I could. No, I think I look, I look like I'm on the Olympic TikTok team or something. You know? Here we go. Um, yeah, my pants say Paris on them. Did you guys watch the Olympics? Did you guys? Yeah, the Olympics was pretty cool. I liked it. One guy, yeah. I saw, I saw it. What's up? Oh, kind of. I, I don't know. I wasn't going to get anything cool out of that anyway. But thank you for being here. Um, yeah, the Olympics. I don't know if you guys follow the Olympic Village. But they made the athletes' beds out of cardboard. And that's because they're trying to deter the athletes from having sex with each other in the village. And um, aren't these the people we want to have sex with each other? Like, are we not trying to create the next X-Men? Like, we could literally end racism if we just had all the Olympic athletes have sex. Do we not want a Jamaican Chinese kid who can throw a javelin 600 yards? Are you kidding me? If anything, the Olympic athletes should be forced to have sex. It should be one giant mattress that they all sleep on and they have to fuck. I think that could fix all of our problems. I mean, we're not too far off from sex being an Olympic sport. I mean, I can see it. What country do you think would win gold medal in sex? If, if sex was a sport. Any ideas? What'd you say? Jamaica? Okay, yeah, I could see Jamaica. Japan? Why Japan? Any, anything for that? What's up? Brazil, okay, Brazil's a good one. I've heard that too. India. India, okay, sure. China. Well, China. Okay. <laughs> now it is a competition. China, India! No. Why India? Just because there's like a shitload of them? Or? I think so. I think they can control themselves. You think they can what? I don't think they can control themselves. You don't think they can control themselves? Okay. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that comment, but. You're Indian, okay. Then it's fine, okay. This guy's, this guy's a fucking rapist. Okay, we're gonna... I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, you can't control your... Are you on a date? <laughs> uh, sure is, your da is your date Chinese? Is this the Indian and Chinese? Oh, there we go. Gold and silver right there. Um, God. <laughs> and, uh, no more Olympics. Back to local sports. I'm a big Washington Wizards fan. Uh, yeah, hell yeah. We exist. I know. Thank you. Uh, some people don't know this. The Wizards used to be called the Bullets, but they changed their name around the year 2000 because gun crime was so high in the city that they figured change the name of the basketball team, everything will work itself out. And, um, it did. No more gun crime. But there's been a huge rise in wizardry, which has been very scary. Just dudes on the corner with robes and amulets like, give me your money, I'll turn you into a frog, bitch. <laughs> Bippity boppity bitch ass motherfucker. <laughs> I know all of our teams get canceled in DC. We had the Wizards, the Bullets that became the Wizards. We had the Redskins, got canceled. We had a gender reveal party. Now we're the Commanders. All right. Which is an interesting move because I feel like the Commanders are the people who killed the Redskins. So it feels kind of like a lateral move there. Well, yeah, I'm, ac I'm actually from Washington, D.C., and by that I mean Maryland. So, that's, yeah, that's the cool thing we like to do. We like to pretend, you know, everybody does it. You know, where are you from? They go, D.C., go, oh, apart, they go, Chicago. You know, like, not quite the same. I had a nice D.C. day today. I spent a couple hours down at the National Mall looking for parking, and I uh, eventually found a spot. Everything was closed, went home. So, a little bummer. But I indulged in some other uh, DC culture, legal weed and mushrooms. Hell yeah! You can, I know, legal mushrooms, how crazy is that? The, the closer you get to the White House, the more drugs are legal. It's pretty wild. 
I think they're just trying to keep us fucked up so we don't realize how crazy this shit is around here. We're like, are you guys still keeping kids in cages at the border? They're like, you're hallucinating. You're fucked up. And they have these, you know, I tried to buy a joint the other day. I just, I, like, remember when weed was just weed? You know, like, now it's like infused with stuff and shatter and keef covered. Like, every joint now looks like a baseball bat in The Walking Dead. You know, just stuff shooting out of it. And they have these weird rules to, like, sell it because it's still not, like, legal. So there's loopholes. It's like, you're buying the receipt and the weed is a gift, you know? It's like, we can sell you mushrooms, but we have to have our eyes closed when we get real. Okay, cool. By the way, it's good to be here in this uh, fire code violation. I want this room. I feel like we're doing stand-up in prohibition. I love this. I feel like I'm in like an upscale crack house. This is pretty cool. Gentrified trap house. Very cool. <laughs> Thank you. Also, uh, yeah, Labor Day. Shout out to all the ladies giving birth. Hell yeah. This would be a, wouldn't that be a perfect time to give birth on Labor Day? You go into labor on Labor Day? Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. And it's fun. It's called Labor Day, but we don't go to work on Labor Day. More like not Labor Day. You know what I mean? It's like, what's the deal with Labor Day? They call it Labor Day, but you don't go to work. If anything, every other day is Labor Day, and this is not Labor Day. Thank you. That was my impression of Kamala Harris. Was, uh, we love Kamala Harris. I love Kam Kamala is so good at gaslighting you into thinking the stuff she's saying is relevant. We did not fall out of a coconut tree. Who we are today is that in which we were yesterday. And we're like, I get it, yeah, I, I know what she's talking about. I'm not, no, no you don't. <laughs> Shout out Kamala, hell yeah, Kamala. Finally, we're gonna have a president you can masturbate to. That's exciting. We, oh, what, what are you saying? I'm saying she's a beautiful lady. Oh, thank God you saved me on that one. <laughs> I had no way out of that. <laughs> but, yeah, the prez, prez elect race, pretty wild. I still can't believe that they, they clapped at Donnie. You know what I mean? They fucking zinged DJT's ear. Remember that? They, they shot a killed Prez. And uh, so I wanted to watch his first speech at the RNC just to like see like, okay, an old man just got shot in the head, right? Like if, if anybody was ever gonna mellow out, like maybe this will chill him out, right? Didn't chill out at all. He talked about his assassination the way he talks about everything else. He was literally like, you've never seen a bullet get closer to a head. It was the closest a bullet has ever come to a president. And, more shots at a president than any other president. I had the most, most bullets at my... Like, the guy can't stop selling shit. Even in that... He called his own assassination attempt incredible and amazing. Like, he's literally like, it was the best worst thing to ever happen. That's not the worst Trump impression. There's been worse. You know, everything is the best or the worst with them. So bad, so good. Uh, also, did you guys know that D Donald Trump is like uh, sober? Yeah, he doesn't drink or smoke. And um, doesn't that just make it all so much more fucked up? <laughs> you know I mean? Just this whole time, just dead sober, like, we're building the wall, they're paying for it. <laughs> you okay, man? Yeah. I know, they shot at the guy. Can you imagine if somebody tried to assassinate Biden? Oh my God, if somebody was like, we should shoot Joe Biden, they'd be like, just give it a couple weeks. <laughs> a gust of wind might knock him down. I think we don't need to worry too hard about that. <laughs> I know, we're in the city for it. How cool is that? Um, this is the place. I love it. The buildings and everything. Um, did you guys, this is some more inside baseball for the city, but did you guys watch the Secret Security, Secret Service Director's Congressional Hearing, yes. Catherine Cheadle. Oh my God. I haven't even seen porn that that's degrading. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> this was so brutal to this lady, the Secret Service Director. They're literally one at a time just lined up like, say you're a little whore. Say it, you stupid <laughs> slut. You're a bitch, you know that? 
And she's like, sorry, the roof was slow. I didn't know what to do. But she quit, so justice served. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. I think I figured out how to win an election. You start with a base that has a very passionate following and you appeal to them and then you get more broad as the election goes on. Like you'll start with like, I support women's right to an abortion. And people go, hell yeah. And then it becomes, I support women's rights. You go, yes. And then it becomes, I support Americans' rights. They go, hell yeah. And then it becomes, big titties and beer. <laughs> and then we vote for that guy and they win. And then they just dangle the thing they promised us over our heads until we do whatever they want. They go, hey, remember that big titties and beer I was talking about? We go, yeah. And they go, well, the Arabs took it all. We go, what? We go, yeah, we gotta go get it. We go, where are we going? They go, we'll tell you on the way. Just get in. We gotta go get it. I know. Yeah, elections, elections are pretty much just like old people influencer contests. You know what I mean? They just go down one at a time like, so why are you cooler than this guy? And they're like, well, I love the environment. Go, okay. Like, they're all saying the exact same shit kind of in different ways. They're like, if I win this election, I'll fuck myself. Okay. And then the next guy goes, if I win the election, I'll stick my dick in my ass. Go, all right. And then a lady goes, if I win the election, I'll stick a dildo in my pussy. And then on the news, they're like, are we ready for a woman to stick a dildo in her pussy? I don't know. That seems pretty extreme. Okay. Okay. Let's, let's get back to the jokes. Um, so I couldn't help it. We're in the city. I love it. Because okay. I haven't lived here too much recently. I grew up in Maryland. But I've been living in New York City, and um, New York is uh, an interesting place just because, like, the homeless people are different over there than over here. The homeless people in New York have egos, which is different. Like, I had a homeless guy come up to me later and I'd go, hey man, can I get a dollar? I just really need a dollar. And I said, sorry man, but good luck. And he went, oh, I'm good. Don't worry about me. I'm like, I'm sorry I misinterpreted the begging to assume you weren't... I didn't realize this was the Series A of funding. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's hard to, like... Living in New York City, you kind of just have to, like, turn off empathy. You know, because there's so much struggling around you at all times. It's just exhausting to, like, care about everything. Because, like, if you go to a charity gala, you're going to have to, like, step over sleeping bodies in the street just to go inside to raise money for the endangered Serbian owls. And it's like, dude, I think Greg will be extinct if we don't help him out. So how are we deciding that the African tree rat is more important than, you know, the native Brooklonian? So. <laughs> it is pretty cool. I was, I was, <laughs> I've been over there living in a, <laughs> an eight by seven Micro studio. That's the technical term. Micro studio. Good God. A jail cell is 8 by 10. So I'm thinking about committing a crime just to get some more feet. So we got some breathing room. But um, yeah, I like, it's cool to be around all this art. You know, I like art. I'm actually a bit of an artist myself. I'm a, a martial artist. Ah, yeah! So uh, yeah, art is subjective. You know, whereas some people think that joke is funny, other people are wrong. So, <laughs> art is a, a special thing. And I like to think about how all artists have struggled to get to where they are over time. It makes me wonder about, like, the greats and, like, what their story was to get where they were. You know, like, you think Dr. Seuss was ever sitting in, like, a studio apartment at a shitty desk at 3 a.m. drinking a natty light, just, like, flippity-floppity, <laughs> bippity-boppity. I gotta get a fucking job. What am I doing? What is this? One fish, two fish, I ate ramen noodles three times today. Uh, yeah, your, uh, your ambition as an artist definitely changes over time. Like, when I first started stand-up, I was like, I'm gonna be the greatest stand-up comedian on earth. And then a few years go by, and you're like, you know, I would just be happy with, like, a stand-up special in my life. That would be pretty cool to have a stand-up special. And then a few more years go by, and it turns into, okay, so I just masturbate in front of the camera, and you'll give me $40? Okay, I'm cool with that, sounds good. So, thank you. You haven't been with me too much for the show. I can see your responses, but 
Seeing, seeing as you're staring over here and then one foot away, but thank you. That's good when the front row can't look at you. But, uh, I'm like the sun, I shine so bright. But, uh, no, this is a cool crowd. This is a very beautiful, beautiful mix of people. I feel like I'm at like a, a casting call for Love is Blind right now. This is a good looking group. We got Doc Brown right up front. Where's Marty? All right. yeah, this is fun. yeah, you have a wonderful look. Are you in a band at some point? No, okay. Just just want a long hair just for fun? Uh, yeah. You know, I'm lazy, actually. That's kind of okay. No, you sh don't sell yourself short. I like the long hair. I had long hair for a long time. And uh, I looked, but everybody, like, everybody thought I looked like Caitlyn Jenner. So I just had it cut out. But um, you know, I, think, I think I look pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah, it's still a thousand degrees every other day here. I, I would never like harm any animal or anything like that, but I feel like mosquitoes is self-defense. You know what I mean? Like that's, they were attacking me. And then also when you're like clapping a bunch of mosquitoes, I always think it's wild that they're still coming at you. You know, cause I'm like, do you not see any of your friends here? Like this isn't working. Maybe cut it out. And then well, the worst is you kill one and it already has your blood in it. And you're like, damn, like now nobody gets it. You know what I mean? So. So, you know, put it back on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you ever been so depressed you read your spam mail? You just go to your junk folder like, maybe I got a job offer from that place I walked by the other day. Maybe they could feel my aura. <laughs> Yeah, there was a long time where I would pick up spam calls. Just because, like, you know, it's fun to talk to these people sometimes. And I had a few different techniques. One of them was um, I, would just, I would just pretend I don't understand anything about the product. They'd be like, uh, are you interested in putting solar panels on your house? And I'd be like, what are solar panels? And they'd, <laughs> and they'd be like, um, it's like an energy source on your roof that uh, gets energy from the sun. And, charges for sun. and I'm like... You, you can get energy from the sun. And they're like, yeah, it's like, I'm like, well, slow down. So how the hell do they turn the sun into electricity? And then they hang up on me and I call back. I'm like, you didn't, how do I get the energy? Or uh, another technique I like, uh, excuse me, sir, how many cable boxes do you currently have in your house? Oh, uh, let me think, I'd say, uh, about 17, 17 cable boxes. You have 17 cable boxes in your house right now. Yeah, you have 17 cable boxes. Okay, and what's your monthly cable bill like then? Um, probably about fourteen hundred dollars. And then they they bring their manager on usually, and they're like, "Tell them what you told me." And I'm like, "Yeah, about fourteen hundred dollars on cable boxes." And they're like, "We hit the fucking jackpot." So then they're like, "Okay, what have we told you for five hundred dollars a month?" You could run all 17 of your cable boxes. And I go, mm, you know, I don't know. I kind of like the way it is right now. <laughs> They're like, we can cut your bill by $1,000. I go, yeah, but I like it. I, just, I trust these ones. Or my favorite one, one time I got a call. Uh, excuse me, sir. Congratulations. You've won a free card for gasoline at Exxon. All right, yeah. Are you at least 18 years or older? Oh, no, I'm not. I'm 12. Okay, um, do you, could your parents accept the card on your behalf? Oh, um, no, I'm, I'm actually an orphan and I'm, I'm homeless and I don't have a family. Uh, okay, do you have uh, a friend who could accept the card on your behalf? Oh, well, um, actually, I don't have any arms or legs and I'm deaf and blind. <laughs> And the guy, I swear to God, he said, is there anywhere we could send it? And it's like, dude, I don't have arms or legs, and I'm blind and deaf. What the fuck am I doing with a gas cart? But, um, you know, I, I got it. I got it anyway. Okay. I have to leave in a second. But you guys have been so nice to me, so I'm going to do the good ones. And I, I had to make sure you were in it for real. Thank you. Um, <laughs> You're gonna miss the. Oh, that you came back. What's up, man? Come here. Let me touch you. Closer to you. Oh, come here. What about that guy? What, what do you mean, what about that guy? Well, he went first. I don't know him. I didn't see it. You got caught. Yeah, I don't yeah. care if the car in front of you was speeding, sir. You're the one I caught speeding. But no, I love you. Thank love you. you.
Oh, all right, cool. Oh my God, he's doing the jack off motion. You can't see it. Gross. No, he's not. He's being sweet. Well, cool. all right, I'll see you in a second. Are you taking a shit or a piss? So I've been liking people's payments on Venmo. <laughs> because why the hell are we allowed to do that? You know? That feels like legally the creepiest thing you're allowed to do. You know what I mean? It's like, Becca paid Danny $5 for pizza. I comment like, yummy. <laughs> People you completely forget exist. My girlfriend from high school, I haven't spoken to in 15 years, it showed a rent payment from her to her current boyfriend. I just commented like, we should have got married. <laughs> yeah, that worked. That worked. I have a lot of respect for people who kill themselves in prison. <laughs> Hear me out. Be because it's like, life sentence, how about three days and I'm out of here? You know what I mean? It's like, life sentence is whatever you make it. That's gaming the... So, oh. How's it going in the bathroom? I was uh, a first responder to a car crash the other day, which was very exciting for me. A car got T-boned and drove directly into the corner of a church. And, um, I see you. And, uh, and a car dr slams directly in the corner of a church. I was the only person there, so I run up to the car. And um, the lady pops out. I go, what, what can I do? What do you need? And she goes, my husband, my husband in the passenger seat. Help him, help him. I go, okay, okay. I open the seat, and it's a big dude, and he's... You know, he's kind of laid out, and he's like, ah, ah help me. I, I pull him out, we have him on the ground, and um, the, the wife is, like, rubbing his arm and holding him. So, you know, so I hold his other arm, I'm rubbing him, and he's like, ah, oh, I'm dying, it's a pain, I'm dying, I'm dying, help me, help me. I go, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. So we call the police, we're there with him for a little bit. And, you know, when it seems like things are going to be okay and calm down, I stand up for a second, because I'm like, you know, I don't know if there's anything else I can do now. But he goes, no, no, come back, come back, come back. So I get back down with him, and I'm rubbing his arm, and then his wife interlocks with his one hand, so I, I interlock with his other hand. <laughs> And then, he, and then he does this, he goes, ah, no. <laughs> and that's when I realized it wasn't that bad. Because if you still have energy to be homophobic, like, the guy was literally like, I've been straight my whole life, I'm not going to hell now. Like, let go of my hand. But, um, but yeah, I think he was fine. And I'm a hero for, for holding his hand. And um, that does not count as one of the good ones. So, <laughs> Eric, how much time do I have left? Oh, thank you. <laughs> Hell yeah, it's Labor Day. Woo! Speaking of art, uh, I was watching that TV show Ink Masters, the uh, tattoo competition television show. And uh, it's interesting because tattoos are supposed to be like sentimental, mean something to you. And these people on TV are getting tattoos, and then judges are like, that sucks, you lose, get out of here. <laughs> but these people still have the tattoo, like for the rest of their life. Which is why, and like in 15 years, somebody will go, hey, why do you have a giant cat on your back? And they go, oh, uh, well, the guy thought it would get him to the next round. So, yeah, this one means I wanted to be on TV for 15 minutes. This one means I needed $20. So. Any cool tattoos in the room? Anybody got anything cool? No. What happened to these? Was there anybody sitting up front or just never showed up? No. Okay. Yeah, that kind of hurts my feelings. Front row, dead center. It's like... The, this is where the audience could be one day. Well, when you're a star. Well, I'm big on TikTok. I have 300. Did somebody audibly sigh at that? I know. Well, I'm going to finish in a second. I have 330,000 followers on TikTok. Yes, thank you. Yeah, because as you can tell, I'm good for about 15 seconds at a time. So it works out really well for me on social media. Okay, last one. I don't want to abuse your trust. You guys have been so nice to me. Okay, how do we... Yeah, no, we got to do a big one to... Yeah, okay, I guess. Are you kidding me? I just found this outside. I don't even know what this is. Um, I, um, I, I went to a strip club for this joke. Not in the... Uh, I went to a strip club, and uh, the lady, she came up to me, and she said, for $120, we can go back there for 15 minutes, do whatever you want. And I was just trying to be funny, so I said, I'd probably need more than 15 minutes. 
And she said, for $140, we can go as long as you want. Yeah, so we're married now. And I don't know her name yet, but we're taking it slow. I just loved that the difference between 15 minutes and forever was $20. And be with her two weeks later, you said as long as I want. You can't break the verbal contract. <laughs> okay, last one. I, uh, we're broken down into liberal and conservative, you know, that's what they make us cut into. But uh, I feel like those are too much of blanket terms to apply to these large groups of people. Like, you know, like for example, conservatives aren't conservative about everything, and liberals aren't liberal about everything. You know, like conservatives are very liberal when it comes to guns and Jesus. Put it everywhere. Guns in school, pray in school, pray to your gun in school. <laughs> Get gay married to your gun on Christmas. Like, very liberal. But then, when it comes to liberals, it feels like liberals are conservative when it comes to humor. <laughs> yeah, you feel that? <laughs> like, Dave Chappelle told jokes, people picketed in front of Netflix, nonstop. When it comes to everything else, COVID, trust the experts, global warming, trust the experts. Dave Chappelle's been doing stand-up for 40 years. Trust the experts. Like, I think he knows what he's talking about. And since when have we ever trusted experts? Why, like, you go to a mechanic, they're like, that'll be $3,000. You go, fuck you. No, I don't believe anything you say. Oh, is that not an expert? <laughs> they go, well, it's different for doctors because... Doctors uh, can't be bad people, I guess. I don't know. Like, <laughs> trust the science. Trust the science. You know, 75 years ago, doctors prescribed cigarettes for a sore throat. There's people who are still alive from a time where doctors prescribed cigarettes. Not many, because doctors <laughs> prescribe cigarettes. But things change all the time. So, you know, love your neighbor and... Uh, <laughs> There's, uh, you know, I don't have a great ending to any of that. But, um, you know, I just wanted to talk for a second. But you guys have been so sweet to me. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Appreciate you. I love you. Eric, Barbalace.